Hello, very warm welcome. Let's talk about number three, Daniel Ricciardo. What is going on with his 2021 season? He moves from Renault to McLaren and he's not settled at all. And I feel like Daniel Ricciardo gets a free pass because he's a nice guy and everyone loves him. But on this channel, I give an honest opinion. So I'm not going to float up to Daniel Ricciardo's rear. I'm going to tell it straight. He has been poor this season. Poor. He's got uh, 24 points. Lando Norris has 56. And yeah, his best finish this season has been 6. Now obviously he's in a brand new team. You've got to give him time. But if you're saying Alonso has been poor, then you've got to put Ricciardo in the same bracket. Lando Norris has had two podiums. Daniel Ricciardo best finish has been six. His best Grand Prix so far was at Spain, where he beat Lando Norris. Qualifying has been a strength, but the races. I mean, Monaco was absolute humiliation. Worse than his HRT days, his Toro Rosso days. It was so bad. Getting lapped by his teammate. Lando finishes third. Ricardo finished 12th. It was humiliation. One of his worst, I called it, one of his worst weekends in Formula 1. So let's go through his results. Bahrain, he got 7th, out-qualified Norris. 6th at Imola. To be fair, he played the team game, let Norris through. Portugal, ninth. Best result in Spain, 6th. And Monaco was a disaster where he finished 12th. He's not confidence. He, like, he's got no confidence. He doesn't feel comfortable with a car. Especially, I think, when he went to Renault, the issue was braking. As we know, Daniel Ricciardo is last of the late breakers. But it's different with this McLaren. He's really struggled. And we've got some new guys. Alonso back, struggled. Ricciardo, struggled. Vettel, struggled but got a great result at Monaco. And then you've got Carlos Sainz, who's actually adapted quite well to his Ferrari. I don't know what's going on with Ricardo. He looks lost. I mean, this is an experienced driver, a Grand Prix winner, a pole position man. But you know, Daniel Ricardo is going to be one of those drivers who's a great driver, probably maybe elite level, but he's not going to be world champion. That's how I see it. He moves teams, like Daniel Ricciardo, he moves teams too much. Like, yeah, he was settled at Red Bull. Max was the number one. Jump ship. Wasted two years at Renault. Wasted two years. Pointless, pointless move to Renault. Uh, wasted two years. Now he's at McLaren, which is a fantastic car. And looking on the up. Zach Brown, Seidel, and look, Norris is sat third in the championship on 56. Daniel Ricciardo is eighth in the championship, sat on 24. There's a 32-point difference already, five races in. And if McLaren want to get third again in the constructors this year, they need Ricciardo to pick up his game. Because otherwise Ferrari will be in there. Because they've got two drivers who will score consistently. I think Daniel Ricciardo will get his act together. But let's have it straight. He gets a free pass because he's a fan's favourite and he's a nice guy. He's been woeful in the first five races, in my opinion. I rate Daniel Ricciardo. Um, but I say it how I see it. I mean, Bahrain. His strength has been qualifying. I'll give him that. Bahrain good. Uh, Imola, he played the team game and Norris got the podium. Um, yeah, Portugal, I don't even remember that race. He finished ninth. Um, trying to think what happened to him in that race. Um, and then we go on to Spain, which was his best weekend so far. Um, and then Monaco. Monaco, what the fuck was that? And he, he he's... He brands himself as a Monaco specialist. He was slow in all practices, slow in quali, and slow in the race. And then the humiliation, the icing on the cake, that it's not going well, is getting lapped by his teammate. His teammate finishes third, Ricardo's 12th, 
a lap down. And he, he won't have enjoyed this week break that we've had. But we're going to a track where Daniel Ricciardo has won. He won that epic at Baku. And he needs a strong Baku. He needs a strong Baku. He has to start showing something. Because it's not good enough. Of course, you've got to give him time to adapt. But, yeah, how long do you keep making excuses for Daniel Ricciardo? Because, um, yeah, he is a quality driver. He's a race winner. Pole position man. But you say it how you see it. For me, he's been up there with Fernando Alonso. He's been poor. Poor. 24 points when his teammate has 56 it's not me digging out Daniel Ricciardo or hating on the guy. We do daily F1 videos and I want to cover Daniel Ricciardo before we get into the Baku preview, track guides and race reactions and so on. It is a big weekend ahead for Ricciardo. He's got to start. He's got to improve. It's as simple as that because his first five races have not been good enough. Um... Yeah, simple as that. He's been outshined by Lando Norris. Completely outshined by Lando Norris. He, he's done well in qualifying, but points are on a Sunday. And already, after five races, he finds himself 32 behind Norris. Ricardo's on 24. 34, 44, 54, 56 Norris. So 32. Um, and Norris has had two podiums already. Crazy. Now, he's come on leaps and bounds as Lando. There's a good environment in the Woking base team. With uh, Norris, Seidel, Brown, Ricardo, He's got to knuckle down. My advice to Ricardo would be actually stay at McLaren and see it through. Because McLaren are looking very good. Positive environment. Mercedes engine. But yeah. Comment down below your thoughts. Would love to know. I think Ricardo's been poor. And I think he gets a free pass because he's a nice guy and a fan's favourite. And everyone loves his smiley like attitude and demeanour. Honest, honest opinion as always. Um, yeah, I say it how I see it. For me, Ricardo's been poor. It's a big weekend at Baku for him. Adios.